Hi book lovers, welcome or welcome back to Cozy Novel Niche. Today I am here with a review, it's a non-spoiler review. I will try my best, even if the book is very short and sweet, so it's kind of complicated not to spoiler anything about it, but I will try and give you just a general idea about what it is. And this is the first book that I've read for uh, my middle grade March. And uh, as I said in my like TBR for the month, this was the very first one that I wanted to read because I was still feeling kind of some nostalgia for October for whatever reason. I was still in the mood for witchy reads and stuff like that. And this definitely scratched that itch a little bit if I give you an idea. And uh, I just wanted to share with you my thoughts about this book so that maybe more people will know about it and give it some love. Is this the book of a century? Probably not, but could it be a great read for Halloween, just that pre-Halloween night, just Halloween Eve, let's call it like that, or just in general a good book for younger and of adults, because why not? I'm an adult and I enjoyed it so much. Just an enjoyable read, yes, then this could be it. So let's delve into the story straight in. We're following our main protagonist, Eddie, who's here on the cover. She is the youngest, the youngest, she's the only daughter of a um, witch from a small town where lives her grandma, used to leave her mother and still leaves her aunt. So she's the fourth woman kind of in that generation of women which is living in that town. But she and her mother always live away from that little town and now her mother is bringing her back to the little town just because for her work she needs to move away for some months and so she wants to leave her daughter with her sister, so her aunt, and her mother, so her grandma. And this creates a bit of a havoc in their life because Eddie is 12 years old and she's just in that pre-teenage years where everything is very difficult, you feel a lot of emotions, you're not sure about anything at all at that point, plus add a little bit of miscommunication and the recipe is done. So Eddie is convinced that her mother wants to ditch her and that she doesn't love her enough, that she doesn't want to be with her and she's kind of ditching her in this little small town to live her dream life in the city. Which is not true at all, but in her mind it is at that moment and that's what matters. And she knows that her grandma and her aunt are kind of magical, she knows that there is magic in their family, but unfortunately she cannot dip into that magic. She just slightly feels it, but it doesn't, it doesn't ever turn up to be like this huge manifestation of power that her mother, for example, could summon. She cannot. And so she feels like a burden to the family, like someone who isn't fit to be part of, her, of the family. Plus she knows that her grandma and her aunt, they both do a lot of good for the town where they live due to their powers and she just cannot help. And so she feels useless and she feels worthless and she feels unloved at the moment. So this is kind of the premise and she ends up arriving at the town where she meets her new friend and I loved the side character here because her friend is actually a Muslim girl who is wearing a hijab and she's in love with everything that's monstrous and just quirky and unusual and I enjoyed her character so so much. I've never met actually in a middle grade book a character wearing a hijab where it's kind of normal and just presented in a way that this is it, she's my friend, who cares, let's move on. And I don't know, it was accepting and lovable to see it. Uh, so that plus a magical bunny that <laughs> follows her everywhere. And so this is the recipe for this book in which we're following the day of Halloween and in this little town where she arrives, she discovers that her, ma her family is not only magical, but it's also cursed. And apparently in that town, more than three we, we cannot ever have more than three witches at a time. And when she arrives with her mom, something happens and they end up being all four of them, the whole family, 
in the town and this awakens an old curse. So she just needs to figure out how to solve that, how to save everyone, because if she fails, someone, probably her, will die and something horrible may happen to the whole town. So yeah, that's the premise of the book and it was just enjoyable and lovely. It is very short. I mean, it's like one, maybe 200, yeah, it's 210 pages, plus it's written like with a lot of spaces, but it's just lovely and beautiful and it can be, again, enjoyed in one evening, a perfect book for pre-Halloween, just put it on your list. I think that you will love it. It's like just fun and lovely in that way in which it also gives you a lovable and meaningful message at the end of the story because we're following a character who has a lot of issues with self-acceptance and self-love and so I think that this could be relatable both for adults and children again. So if you want to give it a try, I think that you won't regret it. Maybe it won't become your favorite book ever, but it for sure will do for a great evening. And again, pre-Halloween, perfect, because that is the setting of the book. And so if you want something that's not spooky, but it's still lovely and witchy, go for it. So yeah, this was my short, I hope, review for The Glass Switch. I hope that you enjoyed it and let me know down below if you've read it or if you're planning to read it and I will see you very soon in my next video and I will hopefully film more reviews for the books that I've read during middle grade March. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Ciao!